Hi, my name is April Smith from 30 Great North Carolina Science Adventures, and today we're going to talk about the science and nature of the Sandhills. The Sandhills is located in southern North Carolina, right on the border of the Piedmont and the coastal plain regions. But first, let's roll back time a little, a few hundred million years. We would notice that the mountains of western North Carolina were tall, jagged peaks, about 20,000 feet high. Over time, weathering and erosion has worn those peaks down to uh, be more like 6,000 feet, and they're green and soft and rounded. Uh, so where did all that rock go? It went downhill. As those uh, mountains weathered over time, all that rock was uh, pushed downhill by streams and rivers to form our current coastline. Now, the Sandhills region um, was an ancient coastline. And as that rock came downhill, it spread through uh, to form a, a delta, a fan-shaped delta, uh, out of fine-grained sand that spread through North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. And before the coastal plains and the sand hills had any plants at all, it was all sand. And the first plants that came in were uh, wire grass, and the wire grass actually helped hold that sand together so that other plants could come in and colonize. And one of the most important plants that came in to colonize were the longleaf pines. And they changed the ecology of the southern U.S. forever. The longleaf pine trees go through three growth stages and they can live for several hundred years. They're also adapted to life with fire. Fire is really important for forests because it helps to keep the woodlands open, which is important for several uh, species that uh, live in the Sandhills region. One of those that we're gonna talk about is fox squirrels. Another is the red cockaded woodpecker. The fox squirrels eat pine nuts and puffball mushrooms. As they eat those items, they then poop out the seeds and uh, the puffball spores, and the seeds then form new pine trees while the spores can form new mushrooms. So why do we need new mushrooms? That's a good question. As the spores settle onto the ground and it rains, the spores then start to work their way into the ground and they attach to the uh, longleaf pine roots underground. Those fungus, fungi can then provide nutrients for trees that are trying to grow in dry, sandy soils. At the same time, the trees provide sugars uh, for the fungus that's attached. It's a really nice symbiotic relationship where both organisms work together to help each other, and it's called mutualism. Now the red cockaded woodpecker is an endangered species. There are only about 10,000 of them left in the wild. Now these birds prefer to make their home in live pine trees, and then they peck little holes underneath the entrance so that all the gooey sap runs down, and it prevents climbing predators like snakes from entering their home. Inside the pine tree home, uh, there is a mating pair of a male and female, and then the um, male offspring from the previous season uh, live there as well. The female offspring usually leave to help form another family, but the males stick around to help raise the new young. Longleaf pines once dominated the southern U.S., running all the way from Virginia to Texas covering 93 million acres. Today, there's only about 4 million acres left. And as this habitat has disappeared, that's what's affected the red cockaded woodpecker uh, and about 30 other species that rely on the Sandhills Forest. Um, if you're interested in seeing this for yourself, then please consider visiting Carver's Creek State Park or Weymouth Woods Sandhills Nature Preserve. And as you're uh, enjoying your hikes along the sandy path. Don't forget to take bug spray, binoculars for the birds, and um, a little extra water. Enjoy your adventures and keep on exploring.